Hello! We will be using Response to Prayer 2, page 285 from the Lutheran Service Book. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm for today will be Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil for he gives to his beloved sheep. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb of reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So, <clears throat> our text for meditation is John chapter 10, verses 29 to 33. So this is the tail end of Jesus' response to some of the Jews who are asking him point blank, well, are you Christ? Jesus uh, says that, well, if you're asking me this question, you're obviously not the sheep that I'm guarding as the good shepherd. So, with Jesus making that strong of a statement, what, uh, what's going to happen is uh, he's actually going to tell them kind of again, well, you should have already realized that I'm Christ. He's making a strong statement towards the end there that I and the Father are one, which I'm going to be reading. And then the Jews will have a particular response. So I'll be going through Jesus' statement that... Uh, he is God, and that, uh, and what the Jews are reacting to. So, from John chapter 10, uh, verses 29 to 33. My Father who gave them, that is, those who are uh, of the faith, so all believers, my Father who gave them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to take them out of my Father's hand. And I and my Father are one. Then the Jews again took up stones to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I shown you from my Father, for which, for which of them would you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, We do not stone you for your good works, but for your blasphemy, and because you, being a man, make yourself God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Jesus is making a major statement. Uh, this is this statement he actually also made way back in, well, maybe not way back, but a while back in at the end of John chapter 8. So at the end of John chapter 8, when he's talking to the Jews in Jerusalem, uh, even uh, around the temple, actually, uh, Jesus says in John chapter 8, verse 58, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. So the reason why the Jews were trying to pick up stones to stone Jesus Christ at that time was when Jesus was saying, before Abraham was, I am, which might sound like weird grammar. What Jesus is actually saying is he's uh, using the divine name Yahweh, which means he is who he is, kind of literally, he is who he is. But um, when God speaks of it of himself, he says that I am who I am. So this is going back to Exodus chapter 3. So this is the covenantal name given by God to the Israelites to address him forever and ever. So uh, it, it occurs over 6,000 times in the Old Testament. Uh, so this is a well-known work, a uh, well-known name of God. So when Jesus says, I am, he's saying that I am the Lord, I am God. So when Jesus is uh, 
talking to the Jews now when he's saying, my father who gave all people to me is greater than all, and no one is able to take them out of my father's hand, and I and my father are one, Jesus is uh, basically making an appeal to having the power of the father, having a personal relationship with the father that no one else has, and saying that he and the father are one being. So he says, I and the father are one. So the Jews recognize exactly what he's saying, and they want to stone him for blasphemy. And I'll get into, well, Jesus' response to that, but uh, I, I first want to address kind of objection to Jesus saying, I and the Father are one, is actually ind indicative of him being God. Because there is an objection, and this has historically been used by, well, I don't know, Jews, definitely by Muslims, also by atheists, is that later on in the book of John, so this is John chapter 17, Jesus is giving the high priestly prayer at uh, the Last Supper. So he's praying for the disciples, and he's praying to the Father and saying, uh, may they be one as we are one, and may they be in me as I am in you. And uh, people have objected to here in, chap in chapter 10 that Jesus saying, I and the Father are one, uh, being um, kind of one being, because they're saying, well, in chapter 17, when Jesus is using similar language, he's actually just meaning that they are collective, uh, that they are brought together and as one in their collective togetherness. So they're not, in, they're not uh, um, merged into one being, but they're separate, that they're uh, one collective, one set of, of, of beings, but not uh, uh, the same being. But when we actually look here at John chapter 10, verse 30, uh, what, what's, what Jesus is actually saying. So Jesus is saying, I and the Father are one. Does he, and then the Jews immediately take up stones to stone him. Okay, so does that mean that the, the Jews are misunderstanding what Jesus is saying? Does that mean that Jesus uh, took language that didn't properly explain who he was? No, he's been claiming that he's been God for quite some time already in, in the book of John. Uh, most notably back in chapter 8, when people are also picking up stones to stone Jesus, and Jesus didn't correct them, he just went away from them. <laughs> uh, also back in chapter 5, when they wanted to kill Jesus Christ uh, for healing on the Sabbath, and Jesus is saying that I am doing the will of the Father, and we are both the ones who are judging. Uh, even earlier here in chapter 10, where Jesus is uh, kind of invoking the prophecy of Ezekiel chapter 34, and he's saying of himself that he's doing some of the actions of God in that prophecy. Uh, there are many times when Jesus is basically saying that he is God in some way, shape, or form, but the people are just not hearing this. Or they're, they're just uh, claiming that he's of the devil. But Jesus is actually saying, no, I am God. And there's just too much evidence to say otherwise. So when we do look in the high priestly prayer in, John, in chapter 17, when Jesus is saying these things, um, trying to remember exactly which verse. <laughs> But when Jesus is saying these things, the context for them, ah, here we go. Uh, John chapter 17, verse 20, and then following. So I pray not for the disciples alone, but also for those who will believe on me through their preaching. So not only the disciples, the apostles, but also the entire church of God, that they will all be that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they may also be one in us, and so that the world may believe that you have sent me. And the glory that you gave me I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. I in them, and you in me, so that they may be made perfect in one, and so that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them as you have loved me. 
So <clears throat> the idea in that passage is uh, more or less that you are one in the Holy Spirit. So that if you're in the faith, if you're participating in the faith, if you're one as the church, then you are united in God, by God, which we know as the Holy Spirit. This is the work of the Holy Spirit making us one. So that's kind of what the situation is in chapter 17. And this has long been led up to in, 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 this, uh, in Jesus' speeches here because he mentions his giving of the Holy Spirit in chapter 14 and 16. So we kind of have the context for that, that no, yeah, this is a oneness in the sense that, well, you're one in the Spirit so that you are sharing uh, the knowledge of God and the purpose of God. But here in chapter 10, we don't have that at all. We don't have Jesus kind of saying, well, you'll all be one and you'll be in me. That's not what Jesus is saying. He's not saying that at all. What he's saying is, I and the Father are one. So we are together as no one can pluck all these believers out of my hand. No one can pluck them out of the Father's hand. So if God is the greatest of all and Jesus Christ is the one who is also giving up his life, who's also claiming that he has mastery over life and, well, mastery over life and uh, by default also mastery over death, which is properly also the realm of the Father, then Jesus Christ is himself claiming that which is proper to God. So Jesus is definitely saying here that he and the Father are one in what we call an ontological sense. So they're one being. And that's what that means. Rather than uh, um, one in, uh, in a more abstract sense, like they are united in purpose or unit or the spirit, as would more be uh, John chapter 17. So <clears throat> if we're also looking throughout the Gospel of John, and we even go back to John chapter 1, where uh, Jesus Christ is the Word who becomes flesh, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, uh, then you don't really have any grounds to say that Jesus Christ is not God because this is all over the place in the gospel. So even if there is one place which uses similar language to here in John chapter 10, trying to de deny that Jesus Christ is the Father, or, uh, that he and the Father are one as one God, then Jesus Christ is still God. It, it, the denial flies, fly, uh, falls flat on its face. So, the Jews understanding what Jesus Christ meant, that Jesus Christ is saying that he is God with the Father, uh, the Jews take up stones to stone Jesus. Uh, Jesus replies in John chapter 10, verse 32, Many good works have I shown you from my Father. For which of them would you stone me? So Jesus is now uh, referencing all the miracles that he did. So you have a number of miracles being shown already in, in the Gospel of John. So, uh, notably, uh, healing the paralyzed man, uh, feeding of the 5,000, uh, also healing of the man born blind, so those are the most notable ones, there's a few others, but those are the notable ones. So Jesus said, well, I have done many good works, so why are you trying to stone me for doing that which is good, that which is proper, that which is the will of the Father? So the Jews answered him, saying, We do not stone you for your good works, but for your blasphemy, and because you, being a man, make yourself God. So the Jews know exactly what Jesus Christ is saying, even if other people might object to it. Uh, and, well, they reject Jesus Christ based on what he's saying, which is... And this will be kind of Jesus' point in the next little section, which I'll get into in a future devotion. But this is actually counter to how Jesus is understanding these things. Because usually, oh sorry, not usually, always, uh, always what Jesus Christ is doing is he's giving an initial word or an initial miracle to show exactly who he is among the people. So the miracle to show that who he is among the people here is uh, more or less what happened in John chapter 9, so healing the blind men. So this is the miracle that's being referenced by these Jews who are now ready to stone him uh, because, well, they, they've witnessed it or at least heard about it. But Jesus has actually proved his 
divinity because of these miracles. So as was prophesied in the Old Testament that the Messiah would perform so many miracles, Jesus has actually fulfilled all these prophe prophecies that he is the Messiah. And he's, in his speeches, what he's doing is he's actually claiming the fact and, and claiming that he is the fulfillment of these prophecies. And I've been talking many times over about uh, his fulfill fulfillment of the prophecy of Ezekiel chapter 34, uh, being the good shepherd. So Jesus is merely doing that which is proper to him. So if the Jews are seeking to stone him for what is proper to him, then they are uh, accepting the miracles but rejecting the speech. But Jesus won't have this. And neither should we. If we are ready to accept that Jesus Christ is a miracle worker, if we are ready to accept that the histories of him are true in any sort of sense, then we should acknowledge that he is God and Lord. Now, at the, at the time of uh, Jesus Christ, here, at, here, in, here in the scriptures, uh, the Jews are ready to reject uh, the miracles, but, sorry, uh, ready to reject the saints of Jesus Christ, but ready to uh, accept the miracles. In our current time, what's actually happening is that people are ready to accept a lot of the teachings, but will reject a lot of the miracles. Uh, and what I mean is that when people kind of go on the quest for the historical Jesus, and this was a great big movement that happened later in part of the 20th century, and still to an extent is going on today, uh, to a far lesser degree, but when people were trying to figure out who Jesus Christ was, what they were trying to do was demythologize uh, the New Testament where they decided, well, miracles can't possibly happen, therefore get rid of all the miracles, and then everything Jesus Christ said is true, except for the things that he said about his miracles. <laughs> so the underlying assumption was that the disciples were just trying to hype up everything, so they were writing untrue stories to try and legitimize Jesus Christ's ministry. And the fact of the matter was that Jesus was just giving some of his speeches, uh, which were true, but then everything else was a lie. So Jesus was... So people were just trying to transform Jesus into a good moral teacher rather than God and Lord. So, and you'll find that to a large degree with uh, people who are ready to accept a historical Jesus, that Jesus Christ truly lived in this world. And when you talk to atheists and agnostics who believe that Jesus Christ truly existed as a real man, uh, many people will actually accept this. They will accept that Jesus Christ is a man, that he was living, and that he said many of the things that he did in the scriptures but they will utterly reject all types of miracles. But they're a package deal. Jesus' words and his miracles are a package deal. In fact, in John, Jesus is pointing towards his death and resurrection time and time again. If you reject the miracles, if you reject the resurrection, you reject the entire ministry of Jesus Christ. You can't pick and choose uh, the words here or the miracles there, you have to take the entire thing, and that's the point. These things are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. If you reject some of this, then you're rejecting the claim Jesus has to be the Son of God and therefore fall far short of the purpose of the gospel. You do not have faith if you're rejecting you know, all this stuff that is in the scriptures. In fact, your faith is in jeopardy if you start rejecting most of the scriptures. I'm sorry, if you reject even some of the scriptures, really. So, if you are accepting the miracles and forsaking the words, then you're forsaking Christ. If you're accepting the words and forsaking the miracles, then you're rejecting Christ. You're rejecting the resurrection because the resurrection is that which saves us, that which uh, brings us life. And similarly, if you're rejecting the words of Jesus, you are rejecting everything that Jesus Christ has said about the resurrection, which is that you are saved in him and have everlasting life. So if you, re if you accept the miracle of the resurrection but reject uh, the words of Jesus, what you're essentially doing is saying that, oh yeah, Jesus Christ is raised from the dead. But this has no meaning for me. Because that's what the words of Jesus Christ are about. Is that how his entire ministry is for you. So, similarly, if you accept uh, the, the words of Jesus and, and reject the miracles and you reject the action of the resurrection, then what you're doing is you're saying, 
oh, well, Jesus has a lot of good moral teachings, a lot of good parables, a lot of good imagery, but this isn't for me because it cannot give me life at all. But, <laughs> but as, as, uh, as Jesus says many times over, his words are what give life. So, uh, and apply to us the, the life that he won at the resurrection. So if you accept one, reject the other, then you're rejecting the entire person of Jesus. So when the Jews reply to Jesus in verse 34, sorry, verse 33 in John chapter 10, then there's, and they're saying, uh, we're stoning you, we do not stone you for your good works, because they accept the good works, but for your blasphemy, because they reject Jesus Christ's words, because you, being a man, make yourself God. So how do we know that Jesus Christ is God, his words and his works? So he says that he's, the Son of God, he says that he, is, he and the Father are one, and his miracles are proof from himself and from God, that God the Father, that he is who he says he is. So if you reject one, reject the other. If you reject Jesus, you reject the Father, and you reject everything according to the faith. What Jesus is trying to show us is that you cannot reject him. So if you want to be saved, you cannot reject him. It's a package deal. So if you do find yourself rejecting him in any sort of way, rejecting his words, rejecting his miracles, in any sort of way, the larger question for you to ask is, well, why are you rejecting him? Why are you rejecting part, this part here or that part there? Because both are necessary. Both, work, both the miracles of Christ and his words are necessary. So rejecting anything, why are you doing so? And that will be your personal struggle based on your answers. But the, the general thing that I can actually share with you to help you through all of this is that, well, if you find yourself rejecting any of it, and rejecting that uh, what Jesus Christ says is true, or rejecting that his miracles are true, and you find yourself doing so for one reason or another, um, then what is faith? What, what is the faith that you have? Well, if you have faith and you're wrestling with this, and you're actually asking yourself, well, why, why are you doing this? Well, the faith inside you that is still drawing you towards Christ and actually allowing you to wrestle with this does not uh, give you some evidence of something beyond yourself. So Jesus Christ is that which comes to you to give you faith so that you may have life in his name. So if you are struggling with faith, that means that you still have faith and you're just struggling with it. It's not necessarily a bad thing that you're struggling with it because this will help you uh, get greater clarity in all these things, but if you find yourself struggling, you still have faith, you still have the Spirit, you still have Jesus Christ working alongside you, forgiving you your sins, blessing you with eternal life. And with that kind of focus in mind, recognizing that you're, you're ready to reject some things rather than others, um, rather than focus on the rejection, focus on why you're rejecting, understanding that you're wrestling with this in faith, and the importance of faith and, and what it gives to you. Recognize the truth of Jesus Christ and that he is the one drawing you towards himself. He is still the one holding you in his hand, still uh, trying to preserve you, preserving you against all the enemies of this world. So if Jesus Christ is blessing you with his life, with his, his uh, lessons, with his learning, be with him. Stay with him. Trust him. He has given you all these things, and you can remain in them. So, yes, you might reject certain things, but as you're struggling with why you're rejecting them, know that you are still Christ and still, uh, still have salvation in his name. Amen. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> page 285, we continue with the Kyrian. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hear my prayer, O Lord, let my cry come to you. In the day of my trouble I call upon you, for you answer me. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. Save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. O Lord Jesus Christ, you are the way, the truth, and the life. You are the only way to the Father and the only source of salvation. You have brought to us your word and shown us uh, evidence of your miracles in the scriptures. Lord, when we find things hard to believe, help us in our unbelief. Help us in our struggles in the faith and show us yourself in your word, in your sacrament, in your, uh, in your scriptures, that we may not doubt but believe, knowing that you are one with the Father and that because of you we have life in your name. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Oh,